Hi, and welcome to the channel. Today's topic is RAM memory and determining how much we actually need, especially for video editing. If you're like me and you edit 4K footage, you have frequently found yourself waiting for the files to render or export to complete. Another reason why you would want to have more RAM is if you like to run a bunch of other things at the same time while having a million tabs open in the browser. So we're moving into the times when a RAM is getting cheaper and there is temptation to get it. We need to find out, is it really worth it? Most of the videos about the subject tend to stick with a comparison of 16 gigabytes versus 32. But I will do the whole spectrum, going from 16 all the way to 64 and in different speed settings. First of all, what does RAM do? As a reminder, and without going into the weeds since the topic is rather deep, RAM is the memory that your computer uses while it's powered on. Once you remove power from it, it loses its data and therefore it is referred to as volatile memory. In comparison, your hard drive is non-volatile storage that keeps data after you restart the computer. I will be testing three sets of RAM at several different clock speeds. For the testing purposes, I am using multiple copies of the same unrendered 6-minute file in 4K, which will allow us to compare both the render and export stats on each test. Exporting is done using the 4K YouTube preset, with the final file coming in at 2.2 GB. The following conditions will be the same for all of the tests. In the Premiere Pro, RAM will be set for performance at the highest allocation allowable. All production files for the film are centrally located in one folder on the primary NVMe drive. Export of the final file is done to the same folder on the NVMe drive, so the transfer speeds of the information exchange is maintained at the fastest option. All non-essential programs, such as browsers, games, etc. are closed. The software that we'll be running is the Premiere Pro, the OBS for screen capture, Task Manager, CPU ID, and HW Monitor to visually monitor the performance and the temperatures. The test was done on a PC with the following specs. Asus ROG Hero 8 X570 Wi-Fi motherboard, Ryzen 5 3600 at the base clock setting of 3.59, but with performance tweaked through the BIOS, allowing the processor to scale up to 4.2 if needed, and the EVGA RTX 2070 Super without any overclocking. If you're not sure what RAM you are using in your PC, you can always check the statistics of your RAM via a free app CPU-Z, which you can Google and download. Just remember that when you install RAM on your PC, the system automatically defaults to the universal JDAC speed standard, which for the newer PC with DDR4 is usually 1066 per channel. Since our RAM is dual channel, we'll multiply this amount by 2 and get the 2133. And this will be usually the default for your BIOS. So I will show you several scenarios with and without adjusting the memory speed settings. If you want to play with the speed setting of your RAM, you can search your BIOS or UEFI for XMP profile setting, or in the current boards, you can select the desired speed outright. Since I have various clock speed options here, let's set our primary performance comparison at 3200 MHz. So now to the results. Here are the times it took to perform the rendering and exporting tasks. As you can see, there is a significant boost in speed when you go from 16 to 32. This is where we see an average of a 20% increase across the board. When we start comparing 32 to 64, you do not see as much of a gap. All of the values are very similar. So to answer my earlier question, is the upgrade worth it? For the purposes of video editing only, 32 is still your most economical sweet spot. If you like running a lot of applications in the background, I would recommend going for 64 if you can afford it. It guarantees that you will have enough oomph on tap, even when you are already using a lot of memory elsewhere. During the testing with the 64 gigabyte setup, I saw times when the PC was using up to 50% of the memory at a time. So if the RAM is there, the computer could utilize it, especially if you open up other programs in the background. I hope that this video was useful for you and now you can make a decision on which type of memory to invest in. Or maybe you need to go a completely different route to address the bottlenecks and the performance for your PC first. In my example, now with plenty of RAM, 
the CPU would be the next thing to get upgraded. It would give the extra processing boost without the GPU associated price tag. After the CPU, I would consider replacing the GPU. By that time, the 3 Series graphics cards will be out in full swing and from what I hear, at a very reasonable price. If you want to upgrade an older setup and want to save the extra cash, there will be a steady supply of 2070 and 2080 cards on the used market starting in the spring of 2021. So, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of the new videos. This was fun, I'll see you guys soon.